Hey guys, welcome to a new video in this Linux tutorial. In this video here, we're going to talk about networking in general and also how networking is, is done in Linux. So first of all here, we're going to compare uh, TCP versus uh, UDP. So TCP is slower but reliable transfer. So TCP is, is a connection between a server and a client. So we can only talk like between one server and, and a client. Where in UDP, we can have like a multi uh, multi-broadcast or like multicast so we can actually like we're just sending out the packages so we have like for example a, a server or like a client that wants to talk to like a number of servers then we can just use UDP to do a broadcast or like a multicast uh, to multiple servers or clients so UDP is just like where we're going to like we're just sending out the packages um, over the internet where in TCP we have this reliable uh, connection between the server and client and then we can only like communicate between the server and the client so TCP is slower, but it's reliable transfer because we're only, uh, we know wh who we are talking to. And typical applications of the TCP um, protocol is emailing and web browsing. So for example, we want to access a web, brow uh, a web browse, then we can actually like uh, set up a TCP connection. So we will first, we will do a handshake with the server that we want to browse. And then we will get a, an acknowledgement of like, we can establish a connection and they can, then we can actually like communicate uh, with each other. But UDP is, is faster, but it's not guaranteed transferred. It's just the best effort uh, like method because we're just sending out the information uh, that we want to like broadcast or multicast to a, a number of servers or clients. And the typical applications of UDP is, is, is a VA, VO, IP, or like some kind of music streaming or video streaming. So let's say like for example, Netflix or, or like Spotify, they want to like um, stream out some music or video, then they will actually like have a server that is just broadcasting all all, all of like the information out because we want uh, as fast as possible um, streaming. So this is a, an application of like where UDP is used. Uh, where in TCP we have like more of this. We set up a connection between a server and a client, and then they communicate. And UDP we just broadcast uh, out, and and we're not guaranteed a transfer, but it's it's just faster because we don't have to establish this connection here first between the two ends. So examples of here, like TCP, we have the unicast here. So we have one server that is that is communicating with one um, with one client, and we can also have unicast in UDP, or just unicast out to one uh, one server or one client. So, or we can also have this multicast here, where, where we're casting out to, to multiple uh, multiple sources or like endpoints at the same time, and we can also have this broadcast here, where we're just sending it out uh, to everyone um, on the internet. So now we're going to talk about DNAT and SNAT. So some of the difference between those two here. So let's start with SNAT here, which is the source um, network um, translation. So let's see, we have like, for example, um, an internet connection here. Like we have a, a local server here or a local computer uh, where we want to talk to the internet. Then we have a source address here inside of the local internet here. So we will have this local IP address here. And then when we go through the firewall here, which 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 has SNAT inside of it, then it will actually like change the source, uh, source like uh, the source, um, the source destination where the where, where the information or like where packages are coming from, and then it will change it to um, to like a global IP address which can be sent out to the internet. So SNAT is 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 the example of when we have a, like a server that wants to talk to the outside internet. And DNAT here is the opposite here, where we, for example, have a web server or like we have the internet uh, and we want to like go in and talk to a, a server inside of a, like a local internet. Then we can use DNAT here, where we have some outside IP address here. And then when we go through the firewall here, it will change the destination IP address um, or like the, 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 the destination um, address instead of the, the source address up here. So this is where we, when we want to talk from the internet uh, to, a, to, a, to a server or like a, a computer inside of an internet. So this is the difference between those two here and this is just like which way you're going. So when to use what is like if you want to talk to the internet from an inside computer or like if you have a web server uh, that you want to talk to to some other different kind of servers. So we also have something called dynamic host configuration protocol or DH, uh, DHCP. So this is when we want to get an IP address so we are able to like uh, go on the internet and talk and communicate with others. So we have this DHCP client here and then we have a DHCP server. So if you want this computer here to get an IP address, then we will first send a DHCP discover. So we want to like request for uh, for an IP address. And then we have the DHCP server here, uh, which contains like the available uh, IP addresses. And then the DHCP server here will send an offer to the client. And then that client here will resend a request for that specific IP address 
uh, that it was offered by the DSAP server. And then when we have sent the request here and it's still available, then it will send an acknowledge uh, back from the server to the client. And then the client has now uh, gotten an IP address that it, can, uh, that it can use on the internet. So we also have something called the domain name system. So when you want to access a website, you know, like we have domains where we just type in like Google or YouTube uh, or some other different kind of um, domain domain name. Then we don't. Then the computer or like the internet doesn't really know like what that domain is. So we need a way to like convert from the domain to an IP address because everything under the hood is just an IP address when we're talking uh, talking about the internet. So first here we have an end user here that, that types in this example domain name here. Then first of all, we'll go into a DNS resolver because we want to find the IP address for this domain here that we have uh, that we want to explore. So first of all, here we send this example here to DNS, DNS root server, and then we go to the name server for it. Like for example, if we want the .com uh, the .com extension, and then we will check here for the .com example website here, and we go into the name server for the .com, and then we will get a root for that name server where we can actually like get. Um, get an IP address for from that route. So this is the example that we go through down here. So for example, if there, it was a, on Amazon route uh, 53 a name server, then we would like to like get an IP for this uh, website here because it has this .com here and it's an Amazon um, uh, running on an Amazon web server. And then from from that domain, we can actually like get the IP address for that domain. And then we have actually like resolved this domain name system problem. And then. We're, we're given an example uh, domain name here and then the result we get back uh, is an IP address and then this IP address here is what actually like shows and goes to the website that we want to. And when we for example ha have already like um, typed in a web server and we have like um, when, we, when we have visited a web server it actually like uh, caches it. So it's, it, it saves it in cache where we have actually like been um, on the web. So we can see that we have now visited this example here and then it will like actually like store it in the cache. So we have this web server here, for example.com, and it will store the, the, the corresponding IP address for that web server that we have um, that we have like entered. So if we enter it another time and the website is or like the domain name is already in the cache, then we can just directly get the IP address and the web page uh, from the cache here that we actually store because we have visited uh, before. So that's it for this video guys here. We've been over like some basic stuff about networking. Um, here in, in Linux where we're talking about the domain name system and how we can get an IP address and also the difference between a TCP and UDP and how these protocols work um, and some different kind of applications for those. So remember to subscribe button the notification under the video and also like the video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. I really appreciate the support. It helps me and the YouTube channel out on a massive way. So thank you guys for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.